Isn't technology amazing? Yeah, we did it. We did our first Zoom meeting with the, we had a company meeting, what, three weeks ago? We used Zoom. It was pretty good. How's business, Jesse? You staying busy? Yeah. You? We, if I didn't have two guys out right now, we'd be hitting our 19 members. Um, we had two guys take leave um, for the COVID. That is besides awesome. that, we're booked. If you look at the calendar right now, we're booked. We're taking orders for Friday. Nice. That is awesome. And we're actually we're we're booked awesome. Friday morning. We're going live. We're taking orders for Saturday. That's awesome. Take it. Yeah. So we're going live. You ready? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you might want to turn your microphone up. How do you do that? I'm on an iPad. Turn you look for your volume button. Yeah, it's all the way up. Try and get closer. Can all you right. hear me now? Jeffrey, we are live with Jeffrey Michelle from the Amazing Integrity Inspections. I'm gonna let Jeff introduce himself and talk a little bit about what they do um, and what home inspections are. And then we'll talk about what is important for homeowners and home buyers about the inspection process. Thank you, Chastity. Uh, this is Jeffrey Michelle. Uh, I own Integrity Property Inspections. Uh, we are the largest inspection firm in Southwest Texas, believe it or not, right here in El Paso. We have nine inspectors. Uh, we do about 3,300 inspections a year, uh, includes residential, commercial. Um, the residential side, I'd say about 60% is pre-owned homes, about 40% is new homes. Um, whether the home be you know pre-existing or, or new, of course, I'm in the business. It's very important to, to get a home inspection. Um, you'd be surprised some of the newer houses, uh, some of the things we find um, where the homeowner wouldn't have known it until they actually moved in. Even though there was a warranty involved with the new home, um, the last thing you want to do is move in. The first day you realize you're, there's a water leak or a gas leak or you know the stove's not working or whatever. You know, even though the builder's going to fix it, it could take days to get over there. Yeah, I totally um, get that. You, you made an amazing point. So when we kick this off, let's talk about new versus resale, right? I have a lot of buyers that ask me, if they're buying new, why should I get an inspection? Because we always recommend an inspection, even if the the buyer's agent, I mean, the seller and agent says, hey, we just got an inspection two weeks ago. Yeah, but it wasn't the buyer's inspector, right? It wasn't somebody that the buyer actually hired. So let's talk a little bit about what you see in new homes so they know and why it's so important, even if you're buying a new home to get a home warranty. I know we just had one. You all did it for us. It was a brand new home and they had forgot to put the motor in the furnace. Homeowner would not have known that when they first moved in. I mean, that would have taken a little bit to figure out. And and that was in a winter. That wouldn't have been good. Yeah. You know, the most common thing we see with new homes, uh, deficiency, believe it or not, is that the air conditioner or the furnace doesn't work. The HVAC people put it in. Um, I'm not sure if they don't test it uh, when it goes in, but it just doesn't work. And can you imagine moving into a house in July in El Paso and the, and the AC is not working? Um, or in the winter, you know, the furnace. That's probably one of the most common things we see on a new home is the furnace not working. The next common, believe it or not, and this is crazy, on a flat roof, they don't seal it. They don't put the sealing uh, material down on the flat roof. So all it is is just felt paper. And that's crazy. And, it, and you, you know, the first time I saw it, it's like, wow, they forgot to seal the roof. Um, but it's extremely common. It, it's, it's, it's more, I, I bet... One out of every 20 new homes we do, the, the flat roof is not sealed. Or if it is sealed, it's not, it's not proper. Um, but just no sealant whatsoever is, is, is quite common. Um, but, and then, you know, gas leaks are common. And also water backing up in the drains um, for a new home. New home construction, there's a lot of debris. There's a lot of, you know, you know crap goes down the, the sewer pipes during construction. It clogs it up. When we go in, we're running a lot of water uh, down those pipes. 
and it's it's I would say it's not as often as not sealing the roof, but quite common where the, the water backs up and yeah. then floods the bathroom. And yeah. you know, of course, we're running around trying to stop it, but that's pretty common as well. And then the other things are just you know the garbage disposer not hooked up or wiring is incorrect for the garbage disposer is quite common. Dishwashers leaking, they didn't tighten up the plumbing um, uh, for the uh, drain pipe. That's common. Uh, showers leaking, caulking, they didn't caulk the grout. They didn't grout in between the tiles in the bathrooms. I mean, just silly stuff. Um, but just, it's, it's, you know, just builders are, whether are they too busy or their quality control is lacking. Uh, some builders are better than some, than, better than others, of course. Um, but uh, it's definitely important to, to keep, you know, new builders, to look at those homes before you move in. Because the walkthrough is just looking at cosmetics. On the walkthrough, in the blue tape walkthrough, they call it, they're just basically, they're not testing every system. To see if it's installed properly and if it works. They're just looking for cosmetics. Right. Yeah. So super important. You know, we had one one time that in the um, cross phase where they put the furnace. This particular builder puts the furnace there. Um, the subcontractor had put it in the wrong place and they had already cut out the hole for the roof to put that furnace stack in. Right. And it was the wrong place, so they moved the furnace, but they didn't cover up the hole. And that was found during the inspection. It was a brand new house. I just say, imagine if the homeowner had opted out of the inspection and what problems that would have caused them. And you know that that problem would have came after the builder's warranty was done. And so oh, yeah. it would have been a fight <laughs> for them to get that. You know, it's the it, it, it all on new builders. You know, there's a lot of good builders out there, but you can have one builder. I'm not calling on any particular company, but if they build homes in the east side or west side, it all goes down to the foreman. You know, who's that foreman that's on top of that job, making sure that contractor is doing it correctly. Um, if you've got a great foreman, usually very minimal issues. Um, if you've got a foreman who's not on top of his game, it could be a lot of crazy issues, you know. Um, you know, because they got to stay on top of the HVAC guys, electrical. Because the HVAC guys really don't care about the framing, right? Right. And the electrical guys don't care about the HVAC. Right. And so you get HVAC people installing, when they're installing in the attics especially, they're cutting trusses trying to make room. Well, you can't just cut a truss. You know, you gotta, <laughs> that's an engineered truss. Yeah, it's it, gotta be it, engineered. <laughs> it's for a purpose. Exactly, you can't just cut this stuff. So, you know, we're definitely looking for looking for all of that. And it just comes down to the foreman's, you know, are they on top, does the builder have a good foreman who's on top of it? Yeah, I totally agree. And, and also does the buyer have a good agent that's representing them, right? That knows the builder, knows the quality and can steer you around that or steer you to it. Or just say, hey, you got to get an inspection. Um, so, you know, it, it's all about having the right team on your side, the right inspector, the right realtor, choosing the right builder, choosing the right lender. I mean, it all goes hand in hand over a great team that is representing you and got your back. And so it's pretty scary um, if you don't and you have somebody that doesn't know that or they're just like whatever because they don't want to have to deal with another thing. Um, Yet it's super easy because all you do is submit your report to the builder and they fix all the deficiencies, provided a few things where there's a state and city code um, difference that is a Texas code, but not necessarily an El Paso code. I think one of the ones we see mostly with that is that accordion style thing that they put on the hot water heater, I think. Remember, we've had a couple of those and they say that in Texas, it's um, it's not code because like in places like Dallas that have tornadoes or things that it's not good, but because we don't have those here, it's not a city code. I remember something like that one time, but um, you well, know, you know get some realtors, and this is important. You're right about the whole team, and it starts from the realtor all the way through. And you know, we get calls, and this is quite often. Uh, a buyer will call us up and say, "Hey, we're looking at buying a new house, and our realtor said it didn't need an inspection, but we're kind of thinking that it does. Do y'all do inspections on new homes?" And I said, well, "Absolutely, yes." She goes, well, our realtor said that you know, it's a new house and the buyer and the builder does the inspection or you know, we'll get a blue tape walkthrough. But we're just, we're just kind of, we see some things that just doesn't look right. And it's like, so you're, you're right. It starts, from, it starts from the realtor. I mean, every house I've bought, even before I was an inspector, I got an inspection. Um, but you know, of course now I own a company, so I recommend inspections, but um, it just makes sense. I mean, it, you know, you want to make sure everything's right. You don't want to move into a home 
um, that you know has issues, and and you could have got a, a, a relatively cheap inspection um, and save you a lot of heart, you know, headache going down the road. You know that's pretty scary that you have a realtor actually telling a buyer not to do that. If if you are out there and you have a realtor telling you that, that that's a red flag, y'all. You need to call an inspector. Like thankfully, these buyers were smart enough to do. Um, that's that's just people advocating for you um, and making sure that you're taken care of. And here's a trick that we tell our buyers, and you've probably done some, Jeffrey. You know, usually you have a, a bumper to bumper one year warranty with the builder, as long as it's not something you cause. You can't punch a hole in the drywall and they come out and fix it. Um, mm -hmm. But we tell them at 10 months, when that 12 months is about to end, call you out again and do another inspection and turn that list in if there's anything deficient and get one more good run through before their one year warranty expires. Have you seen those? Have you we, done a bunch of those? Absolutely. We do a lot of warrant. We call them warranty inspections. Um, we, all of our clients will get an email about 10 and a half months out from when they had their first uh, inspection, let them know your warranty is getting ready to expire. Um, it'd be prudent to get another inspection, just see if anything is not working properly or have things have occurred, you know, and, we'll, and the, probably the most important thing is roof. So when we do a roof inspection, if it's a brand new roof, especially a flat roof, um, it's difficult for us to determine how much sealant they put on there. Of course, we're not, we're not digging into it to, to see the depth of it. We can't. Um, but over a year of weather, you'll see if that was a, if that was a light coating that they did and because there'd be a lot of deterioration. So right. a, a, typically a, a flat roof needs to be resealed every three to five years. Um, I've seen some new houses where within the year you got to put another seal, you got to put another coat on because they didn't they didn't double coat it. They only put one coat. Very difficult for us to see that. Or if there was windstorms and they haven't been on their roof and they have shingles, some of those shingles are now gone and they couldn't see it from the street. That's pretty common as well. And even the best of shingles, you know, when you get high winds, especially here in El Paso, um, they'll just take them off. You know, no fault of the builder. It's just it's just nature. It's high winds and it's going to take those shingles off. Um, so, and that can lead to, you know, significant issues if it starts raining afterwards, of course. Yeah, I love that. Let's switch gears to uh, resale homes and let's talk about some of the common things because we've sold so many homes now that when I get one of your inspections, I can almost tell the buyer exactly what's going to be on there because, I mean, there are some things that are just going to be common in every resale. So, excuse me, let's talk about some of those things that you see commonly um, it's a no-brainer. If you're buying a resale, it is a no-brainer. You need an inspection. This is your safety, and you, you're, hopefully you hired us, and we're taking care of, and you don't have any worries, but if you have somebody else you've hired, make sure they're writing in that 10-day option period so you can do your inspections and negotiate repairs that protect your earnest money or good faith deposit, as some people call it. Um, but in Texas, it's called earnest money. Um, and talk to us about that and some of those common things you see, and then tell us about um, you'll see a lot of times on there, you know, it's not code compliant today, but it was when it was built and just, you know, clear up some of the misconceptions on that, those codes and do they have to, the seller have to make that code compliant today. Right. So, um, the codes are constantly changing and this is not a code inspection. It's a TREC inspection. We are licensed by the Texas Real Estate Commission and TREC, short for Texas Real Estate Commission, they govern us and they they enforce what we can inspect and what we have to let the buyer know. So if let's just say we're doing a 1978 home um, and it's the original owner or it's maybe several people have owned the house. Um, well, today's codes, especially when it comes down to electrical, you know, you have GFCIs, which are ground fault outlets in the kitchens, bathrooms, garages and exterior. And also now you have AFC, arc fault outlets. Well, when this house was built, they didn't have any of that, you know, half of them weren't even invented yet. Uh, but now you have to have these outlets in every single bathroom, all outlets in the garage, all outlets in the kitchen, um, and all outlets in the exterior. Now, when they st first started bringing GFCIs on board, in the, the original codes where it has to be within any outlet within four feet of a sink has to be GFCI. Well, as time has gone on, that's evolved, right? Now, it's just getting... Kind of ridiculous everything is going to be gfci or afci so what we tell our clients is and this is the most common thing we see in um pre-existing homes is electrical because the codes change so quickly um 
was it you know my if you were my client i'd say listen there's no gfcis in the kitchen or the bathrooms this house was built way before they were required um it's the house wasn't deficient when it was built it was built to, to that day's code it doesn't mean it's deficient now it's our observation we have to tell you because trek tells us to tell you now would it be prudent for you to change or maybe ask for gfcis you could do you have small children are you prone to taking a you know a bath while blow drying your hair <laughs> you know so it, it, it is it does offer a safety feature it, it stops people from getting electrocuted um in extreme circumstances but um that's probably the most common do you have to fix it as a seller if the buyer insists on it and during negotiations and that's where you come in um i guess you could but it's on us we have to report it we have to report like GFCI. Another example, uh, very common, if it's a two-story house, stairways. So now the hand railing has to be um, terminated into the wall. It can't just be sticking out. And so I guess what's happened over time is that, you know, maybe women or men with uh, shirts untucked that their shirt or their purse might catch that hand railing going down and then they fall. Um, so now they have to be terminated in. And we see we see new homes still today without terminated handrails. Um, you know, that's that's kind of it's it's common stuff like that in pre-owned homes. And I, I guess probably one of the a little bit more serious would be we're seeing a lot of conversions from swamp coolers to AC, um, and you, it's converting all over the city, and it's really getting popular because prices are going down on on refrigeration. So you, we do see a lot of conversions. Some people are hiring companies who, you know, one, they're not pulling permits um, and they're not doing it to code. And they're just kind of throwing these air conditioners in there. Uh, they're not checking the duct work for rust. Um, they're not using an electrician to have them wired. The panels are too small. Um, so that, that's pretty common as well on pre-owned homes. If it was a swamp cooler originally, uh, the conversions. And that's that, cause that's more problematic than a, not having a GFCI in the garage, right? Right. So, I mean, you got to, and that's where, you know, we, on our reports, you know, we, we, you know, we, we have our, 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 uh, our comments where, you know, typical finding for a home of this age, you know, it, it wasn't code or wasn't required when his home was built, you know, stuff like that. Um, windows can be expensive. You, I know you, and, uh, a lot of people don't open their windows because there's a lot of dust in El Paso. Us, we have our windows open. All, our windows are open right now. Um, so that dust gets in there into the windows. And if you don't clean those out, they tend to start binding and breaking. Uh, not the glass itself, but the mechanism up and down. Right, the, the um, pulley and the inside. Exactly. So dust gets in there and it just destroys them, especially if people are using the windows. It just, it just clogs it up. So that's, that's pretty common for pre-owned homes is windows. But windows can be expensive. Um, you know, I wouldn't overlook them. We just did all of our... we. Our house was built in 98 and we bought it in 2014 and we just replaced all of our windows and we did it one month at a time. Yeah. Because one, I'm sorry, one room every month is what we did yeah. um, because they're expensive yeah. and one room has six windows. Um, so windows, windows can be expensive. That's, that's probably another common area. Um, and so if you have a swamp maintenance, pool, right? Roof maintenance is another big one that we see almost all resales. Absolutely. People don't think that you know, the roof is almost like a car, right? Every year you get a new oil change in your car. Well, every year you should really get your AC service. It costs like 50 bucks per unit. So me, I just had mine done two weeks ago. It was like $105 with tax. They come in, they check the refrigerant and make sure it's all running properly. They check the coolant, all that stuff. Um, and same thing with the roof. I go on my roof once a year and I look at all everything. I'm, of course, I'm an inspector, so but it, it'd be prudent to get that done. Um, at least look for cracking in the parapet walls, look for cracking in tar and gravel and shingles, look for missing shingles. So, I mean, it's just that, I mean, your house is your biggest investment, much more than your car, right? And right. you're still getting, getting your oil change in your car every, what, three to 5,000 miles? Yeah. And you dollars, but people don't, people don't check their houses. They don't. They don't look at their water heater, which is a thousand dollars if it goes out. They don't look at their roof, which could be, I mean, who knows, twenty thousand dollars for a roof. You know, I've seen them. I mean, for a full replacement, it's expensive. 
But if they had just done that basic maintenance every year, it would just last them so much longer. So, yeah. So that, that, that's common. I mean, of course, we're going to see more issues with a pre-owned home than a new home for the most part. But that being said, you know, um, there's no perfect house. I mean, there, 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 there's not one. I mean, every, every house is going to have something going on with it. And it doesn't mean it's bad or it's good. And that's what we tell our clients. You know, we have no clue. We would never tell a client not to buy the house because we don't know what they're paying for. it. We don't know what the comps are. We're not realtors. So that's your job. You're the professional there. And if they're buying that house and they're paying us, obviously they like it. They're, they're spending money now on it. Um, so our job is to let them know these are the issues that we see right now going on with the house and to report that in a professional adult manner without, you know, scaring anybody. Yeah. You know, you said something interesting and I'd like to switch gears to just giving advice to sellers on just um, the maintenance that they should do. You know, you can get as a seller, you can get what's called a pre-listing inspection. So, and <coughs> excuse me, Jeff will come in and, and look at it just like he would for a buyer and tell you if there's some major things that you can get ahead. But Jeff, give them a little bit of advice if they're preparing their home to sell some of those major things that that are easy to do. For us, we know like a tube of caulk and some paint touch up and landscaping and the roof maintenance is just a no brainer. I mean, those are inexpensive fixes because once the buyer, once you're in contract with a buyer, the buyer actually has to now give you permission to do this work. So it won't be so easy to do it when you're in a contract unless the buyer lets you. But some of these things you can get ahead of before you list your home. So if you had to give them a quick five, you know, five list um, itemized suggestion, what would that look like? So we, we, do, we call them pre-listing inspections. <clears throat> I don't think we do enough of them. I think we do. I think if you look at our numbers, about 10% of all of our business is pre-listing inspections. Um, most of the homes are high-end homes, over 400000 um, where the seller will call us and say, I want a pre-listing inspection because they're catering to a different clientele, right? They're, it's a, it's a high-end buyer who maybe expects a little bit more when he's buying this house. And to give that buyer a pre-listing inspection saying, hey, this house was inspected by Integrity Property Inspections. Um, and this is what they found and we fixed everything. So it just, I think it makes for a better sale. It's, it's, it's easier sale uh, for the seller and the, and the listing agent. Um, but things to look for on any house, no matter what the cost is. So you got to remember a Trek inspection. The first thing it is, is visual. Anything that you see that's not right, because our visual is our clue to look at it a little bit higher, right? So if I walk into a house, I'm seeing cracks um, in the sheetrock inside the house. You know, 99% of the time, it's not foundation related. It's just, it's structural. The house has moved and sheetrock has small cracks. And as the house expands and contracts, Every house does it. My, we can walk around my house right now and you, I can show you uh, sheetrock cracks. It's nothing. But it doesn't take a second to caulk it and paint it, right? So that, that, that visual is now gone for the inspector or a potential buyer walking in. Um, next thing would be the water heater. Um, wouldn't take a second, very, well, very limited funds to get a handyman in there. Look at the water heater. Is there any corrosion around the water lines? Is the flue on properly? Um, That's big ones. You see that almost every one. Oh, How do they come undone so easily? <laughs> well, you talk about water and copper, and you know. And That's pure it, science. Yeah, the, the water. Believe that that water heater is moving, right? It's it's a, it's an appliance, so it's always kind of shaking when it's gone. Even though it's very very minute, so those copper pipes they sweat those pipes together, and it's always moving, right? It's just a shaking, very very little, but enough to just to shake them loose over time so it doesn't cost much to get a handyman in there just to re-sweat those pipes if you find corrosion make sure the flues on properly um because that's another visual things that we're looking for um weak uh, leaky sinks fill up your sink for one make sure the stopper works right because we're going to test the stopper oh, and fill the, sink up, fill the sink up and then once the sink is full let the stopper go and then feel underneath the sink because most sinks most leaks that we find, if you just let the water run through the sink without doing the stopper, you won't get a leak. But if you set the stopper and then load that trap, it's a good chance it's going to leak. Yeah. So, and, that, and that's another thing. Those pipes underneath that sink, 
they're always moving, very, very small. And that glue around those pipes underneath will eventually, everything eventually will fail. Um, so that's, you know, think, check for leaky sinks, water heaters. If you can get on the roof, look for, you know, shingles missing. Most visual things, it's like, it's a carpet, you know, all wrinkly and dirty. And, you know, I mean, that's just, are you going to trip as you're walking down the carpet? Um, visual. I mean, it's so, it's so, it's so easy to see for me, but, you know, and I try and, and I, you've been on inspections with me too, and I try and educate all my spec, uh, realtors when you're listing a house, what to look for. Um, open your windows. We're going to open every single window in the house. Most inspectors should. If, we're, if we can get to the window, we're going to open it. And does it open properly? Does it stay open um, when you open it? Or is it, can you open it at all? You know, some are just frozen. Um, so you got to remember in a bedroom, a window is for two things, light and escape. That's it. The fresh air doesn't even come into it. Um, those are the two purposes of a window. So in a, in a bedroom, light and escape. And if the window can't open and it's a bedroom, it's more well, now it's a safety hazard, right? It's got to be fixed. Um, so it's, um, those are probably the biggest things I would say. You said five. So water heaters, paint, cracks, windows. Do the doors latch? I mean, this is all easy stuff to fix. Right. Um, you the know, uh, cracks, you know, every every year maintaining. If you live in an older home, you're going to have more cracks in the newer homes because it was a different material then. They didn't use elastomer paint like they do today. And so you're going to see more of that cracking. So, you know, it's just, it's basic. If, if we as homeowners just did the basic maintenance every year, you know, right. we saw a filter the other day. Uh, it was me and Oliver. I call him Oliver because you're Jeff and he's Oliver. Um, okay. Yeah. Air filter? Yeah. I mean, the air filter, when we pulled it out, the seller said they changed it. No. And Oliver said it hasn't been changed. And the seller Ever. said it has been changed. And so I say, Oliver, go get me the, and the seller was there with me, with his handyman. I said, Oliver, go pull me out the, the filter and bring it in here to the seller. And let's see. Let's look at it. And it was about that thick, no lie. I don't think they'd ever changed the filter probably since they lived in the house, which is scary because you know that's put pressure on that operating system. Oh, and yeah. so I looked at the seller. I said, are you sure it's been changed? And he looked at the handyman and said, and he looked at me and said, put a new one in. <laughs> I was like, like, this is like, but you don't have people that advocate the same way we do. You know, I mean, I'm aggressive, so I'm an aggressive negotiator. I'm gonna call things out that I see it just because it's my fiduciary duty to take care of you as the buyer. It's my fiduciary duty to take care of you I'm on the selling side. And so, well, you know- You do it like you're buying the house, right? That's yeah. the way you, is if I'm gonna buy this house, how do I want it? And that's how we inspect it. If exactly. I, I'm gonna buy this house, I'm gonna inspect it. That's how we try and treat everyone. Well, there's refrigerant with the, with the filters, what it goes back to chassis is that a lot of people have grown up with um, swamp coolers. Right. There's no filter. No right. filter to change. Not used to right? it. Now they're in a refrigerated air house. They think the filter is good forever. Change the filter once a month. That's the deal. Yeah, once buy a month. cheap ones, right? Because the expensive ones, I, you know what I heard, interestingly enough, is it might have been from one of y'all that um, the more expensive filters that have those different layers in there that everybody thinks is protected anymore is actually um causing their hvac system to run harder which increases their electricity bill and it doesn't yeah. really protect them more than the little cheapos it doesn't i mean i would buy the dollar 50 matter of fact my filters i use are cleanable i just wash them out outside i do it once yeah. a month take the hose and just wash it out and every you can they're, they're all available i mean you can buy them so i don't spend anything on mine i think mine are like 25 dollars, but it lasts forever right i just clean it once a month but if you just want to go to Lowe's and buy a dollar fifty one, that's what I recommend. A box, you know, a big box. You know, the HEPA, you know, all the bells and whistles because now the HVAC unit can't breathe properly, and it's the air is so restricted. You're not getting a good delta T or a good you know, difference in temperature from the supply and the return air, and the, the system is working harder than it should. Um, but when they don't clean them, that that dirt will get past that air filter, and now it's going to. I've seen evaporative coils inside the coil. Which is completely caked with dust and dirt, hmm. and now, now it's expensive. Now you got to get in there. HVAC guy has to take the cabinet apart. They have to take the vap coil out, and they have to acid wash it clean. That gets expensive. Yeah. So the moral of the story is, it doesn't matter, buyer or seller, get an inspection. If it's a new home or a resale home, get an inspection. It protects you as the buyer buying an investment. 
seller. It protects you in maintaining your home. Even if you're not selling your home and you want to, you know, just a quick peek at what's going on with your house, you know, every few years, hire an inspector to come out and, and give it a once over for you and tell you what you need to do. Or um, Jeff, you might be available for them to hire just to come out to, to do a walkthrough and tell them how to maintain their house. You know, we take we just assume people understand how to maintain their home because it might be common sense, but that's not true. I mean, if you're not taught how to maintain a home or somebody doesn't take the time, just like the water heaters and, you know, turning that little thing up and draining them a, once a quarter or every week, letting that little TP, what TPV valve run a little bit. And so it keeps the um, corrosion out. I know I once heard in El Paso, we have about 7,000 pounds of microscopic rocks that go through our water system per month. Yeah, we got high sediment here. Yeah, I mean, it's high sediment. And so, you know, that that over time beats it up. So we appreciate you. Tell them your website, Jeff, where they can find you and your phone number should they want to hire an inspector. So we're Integrity Property Inspections. Um, if you do a simple Google search, El Paso Home Inspectors, um, Google our competition. Um, we're at the very top of the list. Integrity Property Inspections, we have over 655 star reviews on Google. We're A plus rated and accredited with the Better Business Bureau. I think we're the only firm in the city that is that's accredited and A plus. Our website is www.integrityspec at spec.com. Um, there's a lot of information on there. We put our Google reviews right on our front page. Um, so we're, we're proud of our, our reviews. We you know we're we try and like I said we try and inspect every home like like we're buying it. Uh, we've brought a lot to the industry here in El Paso. Same day reports. Um, all of our inspectors are one. They're all trained by me. They're all Trek certified. Uh, we do our own in-house training. Um, we we use a Whisper software, which is the, probably the best software for. Uh, maybe another call. We use Whisper software, which is uh, the best in the industry, and you'll get the report the same day. Uh, for our our liability, and also for your uh, for our clients, we do wear body cameras. I got one on right now. So body camera, it's a police body camera. We film every single inspection um, and we do offer narration services to our clients. You, you work with a lot of uh, uh, military who are buying houses, one sight unseen. I know that. And you, I, I can never imagine doing that, buying a house sight unseen, but they can't be at the inspection either. So we can narrate the whole inspection to them via the body camera and they'll get that under one drive link uh, the same night. Yeah. So it's like that feature. Yeah, so we do thermal imaging. Uh, we have moisture meters. We go above and beyond track standards, um, but we also keep our reports, you know, easy to read. Um, we're not trying to scare anybody, or uh, you know, our goal is that they love, they love the house. Uh, obviously, they wouldn't hire us if they didn't like it. Um, but we're not going to lie to them either. We're going to we're going to let them know this is what we found, and this is what we think that you know you need to pay attention to. Yeah. Um, you also have some other um, services. So you don't just get inspections. They also have a utilities concierge service. So once you close on your home, utility concierge can come in and help you. Um, the, our remote buyers love this because they don't always have time or don't know, you know how to get those transferred. And so they'll step in and do that. And they have a great vendor list. So after you buy and you want to do some things to your house or you need some help, they're always there to advise you on that. And Jeff, we appreciate you, and I know the PCS team loves it when our buyers choose you because we know the quality that we're getting, and I appreciate you taking the time to educate our viewers, both buyers and sellers, on the importance of a home warranty and home maintenance. Well, thank you, Chastin. Yeah, you're right. Andrew Cheney will call them. We, it's, it is free. It's included with our service. There's no cost for that. They'll hook up all your utilities for you. And then we also have a strategic partner list and preferred providers, you know, friendly repairs or work that you need done on your house. It's companies that we have worked with, that we trust, and we, we've seen their work, and there's no charge for that whatsoever. Yeah. So. We appreciate you taking the time. Tell Blanca hello and all the guys over at Integrity, and y'all have a wonderful day. Thank you, Chastity. Y'all be safe. Y'all, this is Chastity with the Preferred Closing Specialist Team in Keller Williams, El Paso, bringing you value through Zoom during this crazy time. Just want to educate you on buying process, selling process, so you know. What questions to ask? What do you do? And just know that the PCS team's always going to be an advocate, no matter what side that we're on selling or buying for you. And this is just a testament of how we keep you educated, how we keep ourselves educated. So we're doing our best for you. 
We hope you're safe during this time and have an amazing day and stay tuned because we have a lot more coming and you can go to our YouTube page to watch these again on PCS El Paso. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.